Hey guys, Luke here. This is episode 4, I think, of um, my Bulldogs playthrough. Um, it's just like a career mode. It's not a career mode sort of thing. Um, but it's just a competition mode, I think is what it's officially called. Um, it's kind of funny because um, like every time I go into it, I keep going to career mode first and then I realise, oh wait, like I look through and I'm like, where is it? And then I realised, oh wait, I'm not doing a career mode, I'm doing a competition. So, uh, yeah, obviously, the, like, you've seen the menu before, it's, uh, very different, which I think, um, I think they should just have a similar one to the crew mode, the crew mode layout is so much better, um, but I can't do anything about that. So let's look at the Raider side, Cornish at halfback, it's a decent side, oh, okay, let's be honest, it's not a great side. Um, we got the same side as, uh, last game, I believe. So uh, let's get into it. Hawkinson. Chase Stanley. Let's hope and I could have pushed him off. Once again, we're playing on uh, the legendary mode. Legend mode, possibly. It's legend or legendary, one of them two. Come on, Rex. Good run there by Tony. Here we go, Hawkinson. Just good stuff, getting cut up half. And we're going to go in score, you'd think. Who's this coming across? Doesn't matter, we score. Like I said in one of the previous episodes, it's, it gets to the stage where instead of coming over, um, I don't know exactly how to initiate it, but it w they'll come across to a certain extent. But um, eventually, if you watch here, he's coming across, coming across, and then he'll just stop and straighten up. I guess while, wherever you're moving sideways, they move sideways possibly. Can't say for sure, but... This one will be straight over, I think. No, no. Missed. Well, I jinxed it. I jinxed it. Now, one thing I want to talk about in this episode is um, Kristen Inu. Now, I don't know if... By the time this is up, um, I'll have a look. Like a genius or stupid or what, but... Um, Major reports that he's going to France to play Union. And I tend to think it's true. Um, in the, pr the last game, the time of recording this is a uh, Sunday, and the game before was a, uh, well, the last Bulldogs game was the day before, and that was a um, disappointing performance against Cowboys. But Moses Umboy got picked in the centre spot ahead of Chris Nenu, which tend to think that he's on the outer, and I don't blame them. His last game was terrible. But. Overall, it's kind of sad to see uh, Chris Ningo, because um, in 2010 he's loved, he was a, he's a crowd favourite, obviously you can tell why uh, he's got, seems to have, a, he's got a really likeable personality, uh, you just gotta look at all his stuff on Instagram and uh, Twitter and stuff, his good sense of humour, that sort of stuff, stuff that appeals to uh, fans, that gets, that makes him sort of cult heroes at the club. It's just uh, the only thing is his performance has let him down on the field at times. Um, like I said, in 2012, when Bulldogs were hot, um, he also played very well. And then when the Bulldogs were out of form, he unfortunately uh, took a very big form slump. Uh, even, even when we regained form, he couldn't, he couldn't um, join the rest of them. So, uh, it's bittersweet because, um, in terms of playing-wise, I don't particularly want him at the club, and I'd say he'd be taking up a little bit of the salary cap, um, when we signed him. He wouldn't have been on nothing, that's for sure, and then he played for New Zealand straight up and all that sort of stuff. I'm not sure if there was a re-signing period since, uh, 2012. I don't know how long he signed for initially, but... Um, I just feel that he's not strong enough for the team, especially with Lafayette and Morris in the centres. Potentially on the wing, but he's just too too many. He's two rocks and diamonds, and can't afford to have that in the NRL these days. Um, people might not see the wing spot as being a very important sp like role, but I mean it. It can make or break teams. Um, many times the Bulldogs been let down by wingers uh, last few years, um, especially deciding. 
um, players coming in and all that sort of stuff. Not being able to mark up, for example, uh, Mitch Brown quite often. I don't want to turn it into a Mitch Brown bash. Um, he's been playing fullback and I can't stand Mitch Brown anymore. But we'll leave it at that. Um, there's been times where the, the, the Bulldogs in particular, their whole defense is the umbrella. So the wingers come in and then if they miss the idea is that the centers and all that will be able to, the defense will be able to cover, um, will come across and push him in a touch or something like that. Um, didn't really understand it until I played uh, rugby league manager. Now I get it. It does make sense. I understand why teams do it. Um, I see people like my dad, like old school fans. Oh, we have a penalty. Old school fans of rugby league, they don't understand it. And at times I don't understand it either. It's more not understand it, it's more when they stuff it up, it's how do you stuff it up. Um, but a lot of times it's just teams, they are, uh, the winger will not stay on his, uh, his man, whatever, like, the idea is that when you're outnumbered or whatever, to come in rushing in, and a lot of times they do it when it's not needed. Here we go, Corey Thompson. Oh, Milford. As if Milford would make that tackle in the last. Or maybe it wasn't Milford. Maybe it was someone else. Was that Reese Robinson? Probably Reese Robinson. Oh, little Corey Thompson. Um, actually, speaking of Corey Thompson, it's probably a good example of that uh, the other night. Oh, we get lucky there. Um, there was a pass with Thurston. Corey Thompson uh, didn't. I mean, it's hard to blame him because he's not a winger. He's a fullback playing wing, but you know what? Well, um, he's been playing there long enough this year, so whatever. But um, what he did wrong is, I think Brad Fittler pointed it out. He came like it was a good pass on by Thurston, but Corey Thompson was he came in on a player that was already covered. Uh oh. There we go. Should have scored that. Maybe I should have taken a shot at field goal. But that, that's what tends to happen. It's just the, the wing is not reading the play well enough. And it makes it look stupid. But at the same time, when that sort of stuff happens, a lot of times I like to think that, like when um, they score through just having the more numbers, it's I think, well, they probably would score anyways, even if you went man-to-man. -man. Someone would have uh, missed the tackle there. You're just defending on your own line and all that sort of stuff. So... It was bound to happen. And then what would the excuse be? That they should have done the umbrella? I, I don't know. I was trying to line him up for Pritchard. Shillington smash him. I don't like Shillington. Uh, I should explain myself as to why. Um, it's purely down to the fact that I'm not a big fan of Campisi or them. All those senior players, they got their coach sacked. Now, he might not have been a good coach, but when... You're not lifting it like when Campisi can't even play more than five games a season, and he goes and gets the coach sacked. And then that those the games that he does play, like this year he's played more games and he's been dog shit in all of them. Um, there was a spell of like one season where Campisi was a uh, super. Oh shit! Uh oh. I knew that wasn't going to work, and I still passed it anyways. Thought that might have been able to get across. It wasn't to be, but um. Back to Shillington and a lot of the Ra Raiders senior players. Brett White's the only one who I don't mind. That's because he's proven himself and he doesn't play like a pussy week in, win out. Um, Shillington and all that, they have the, they were good players, but they're not good players anymore and they still act like they're the Queensland representative, Australian international, New South Wales rep player, whatever. And um, even if the coach probably wasn't the greatest, for them to go go behind their back, go have big team meetings, threaten the ball and all that sort of stuff. I think that was bullshit. And um, I think it was a really shitty thing to do. And I don't think they had any grounds because it was their performances. Uh, I think they were trying to cover their own ass because they'd been playing shit house, And um, they let the coach take the blame. Um, potentially, I mean, today's the day that uh, Tigers got smashed by Dragons and it's all coming out. That Robbie Farrell and all that sort of stuff. Um, how much of it's true at the time of recording? Um, it's unclear. Gordon Tallis 
has some claims, pretty pretty big claims. But at the same time, it's it's hard to trust these guys. Um, things could have been said in the heat of the moment, who knows. But it's kind of a similar thing. Tigers have done it in the past. Mick, um, Mick Potter's like the current coach. Well, he might not be current at the time of recording. Ah, uh, dear Morris. Um, he hasn't he ha hasn't really had a good roster to work with. Let's be honest, they, they have a lot of potential, but in terms of ability right now, not that great. I mean, Brooks, everyone keeps looking at Brooks as be the next big thing, and he might well be, but right now he's not. Right now he's one of the weakest halfbacks in the comp. I think I saw a stat thing that said he was the worst halfback in the comp statistically. I know statistically it's... Uh, it's hard to judge players on stats, and I personally wouldn't. I'm not an advocate for doing that, but if that's what you want to go by, he's ranked as the worst halfback. And I don't know if it's particularly um, just random stats. I think they were like some sort of formula they worked out. So I mean, it might have some merit to it, but take it for what you will, with grain of salt, if you'd like. Oh, that was stupid. I don't know why I did that. Don't concede. I don't know whether they can concentrate or just keep talking. Oh, anyways, I'll go back to Tigers. So, Benji and all that, um, they got rid of Tin Sheens, and then Mick Potter came in, and they don't like him now. Well, he pissed off Benji, got rid of him, and I'm not sure if there's some, still some backlash over that. Potentially, so that's, that could be a reason why uh, he's on the outer. Who would know, really? Come on, we got to take this one. At least we didn't uh, concede there. We dropped it, but we didn't concede. That's the main thing. We need to get some of these dudes off. So we'll bring on Rex. Uh, we'll put Clemmer in the second row because he's a gun. Put our best defensive players on. And it's getting tired. But yeah, that Raiders, they did a very similar thing when they went to the ball. That, that's all I've got to say. Just... It's just reasons like that, I don't like Shillington. You didn't back up on the field. Oh, but they let them concede. Oh, sorry, we let them score, I should say. Terrible wording. Too many things on my mind at once. We're going to have to go for the short kickoff. I can't believe we're about to lose the, um, to the Canberra. Us, us leading 10 0. Doesn't happen that often. Yeah, but whatever. It sounds like these when I think. Should have kept Frank Pritchard on. Uh, now to what do we do? Gonna have to go this side. I don't think the other side works very well with the right footer. That'll do. Hopefully it works out. Fingers crossed, guys. Let me get the ball back. Here we go. We just need two points. And it's annoying because one of them was an intercept. Oh, and we throw another intercept. Wow, how did that actually... Like, how did that work? That shouldn't have been an intercept. I don't get that. Oh, shit. Uh, it looks like we probably won't get the ball back. We're going to have to try and go for an intercept. Come on, kick it. Kick it. Damn, damn. We lose to the Raiders, wow. And the goal was to go undefeated throughout the whole season. Not going to happen, there's Reynolds disappointed. Fenton, man, the match. I think he's one of the most overrated players. Well, actually, he's not overrated, but he's probably rated perfectly, but a lot of people seem to think he's underrated, and I don't think that at all. But let's um, simulate these games. Yeah, pretty much the ones you expect, I guess. Not any upsets that I can see, at least um, that first glance. But that's the end of the episode, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and um, let's check to see who we play next round. We take on Manly, that should be a cracking game. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button and subscribe to more, and hopefully I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.